Welcome Dragon Champions to another Dragon Log Gaming Presents Dragon Champions video. I'm your host Dragon. Thank you so much for being here. Top 10 list. If you are new around here, hit that subscribe button, hit that notifications bell. Drop a comment down below. Tell me where I went wrong. Tell me who I should put in my top 10. But right now we're going to talk about the top 10 of the game. Looking back in May of 2020. So this is June 2020. It's top 10 list. But the way I do it is I look back in May of 2020 and I look at the top characters and what they provided for the game. And I pick the top 10. Uh, it's all about my own personal opinion on these characters. Uh, certainly I could be wrong in many aspects, but I think that you're going to find these characters to be very, very useful. If you have these characters or using these characters, um, you're going to be very, very happy. These are the 10 right here, uh, and they are not in order. They're just, just starred them on my main account. These, are, this is my main account here. If we went ahead and look over right here, you know, DLG, GNL DLG, uh, these are the 10 characters that I am picking and we're going to go in order and I'll tell you why I believe they are um, number one or number 10 and we're going to start with number 10 right now number 10 of the day is general murdoch general murdoch is the number one has the 10th character in the game because he can be super fast he's got great synergy with goblins um, i have a video that's going to be coming out soon about how good goblins are in the hard hard modes uh, for tower tower hard mode it's fantastic goblins are absolutely fantastic i'm gonna do a video with them and just kind of break down the whole goblin faction for everybody um they certainly have not gotten a lot of, gotten a lot of love uh they've probably been the worst faction in the game i can tell you right now that because of one of the other characters that makes our tier list they are fantastic so uh, General Murdoch is the number 10 character. The reason why he is number 10 for the most part is that he is a plug and play viable character. Certainly he makes he's what makes the goblins go with his uh, with his accelerated machinery uh, leadership. But if you look at all the rest of his uh, things general market gains potency against orders and elves right he deals damage to all uh, all enemies and inflicts slow on them right deals 400 percent of damage to enemies uh afflicted by slow decreases their turn meter and if the target is affected by damage decrease calls a random ally to assist and then of course this is basic he inflicts damage decrease he doesn't need anybody else to help him out. Um, he's fast. He does a lot of great stuff on his own and can kind of just be plugged and played. Um, so very, very interesting character. I think that he definitely deserves the number 10 slot here. The next person uh, who the next character who deserves the next one would be the number nine slot. Uh, and the number nine slot right now for me goes to Renara. Renara is a great character, great healer. I don't believe, I think she's probably the second best or maybe the third best healer in the game. Uh, there's an argument uh, behind Solius, obviously, but she does a lot. She brings a lot to the table uh, with heals. Of course, she's the only, one of our only clans healers uh, last month, but now we have Dr. Frank, which is another, clan, uh, another clans healer who does a lot of really, really good things. As you can see, he's on the list, so we'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, but he, she does just good things. She deals 210% magic damage, applies regeneration to the ally with the lowest health for two turns, right? She heals all the allies, which is really good and applies regeneration on them for three turns. And then of course her resurrection ability can really help in, or, or, you know, really helps an arena. Well, not an arena. I apologize in tournaments to be able to get those, that extra star, uh, to get that, those extra tournament, uh, currency. Uh, and that sort of thing. She also just is an overall viable healer, right? She resurrects people, which, you know, there's no other character in the game that does that right now. And then, of course, at the end of her turn, she restores 15% maximum health and 15% of maximum shields to an ally who has two or more stacks of regeneration, which is awesome. All allies with full health after the effect gain cheat death for two turns. So that's an interesting ability. I you know, the idea that they have to have full health to gain cheat death is a little weird. Um, I don't particularly like that mechanic, but so it doesn't make her nearly as viable. However, I, I think that she does really, really well and she's super fast again, really, really fast and allows for uh, a lot of stuff to be done. So it, she just helps in the tournaments. We have a ton of tournaments where she's really, really viable. We just had a tournament that ended. Um, of course, that's not in May, but in the tournaments in May that she was really, really viable in that. So that goes a long way as well.
So let's get to number uh, number eight. Number eight here is going to be Dr. Frank. Dr. Frank is quite an amazing character. Uh, I would actually say he's a probably a, a he, he's probably not he's not the better of the two healers, but he what he does and how his overall viability throughout the entire game is pretty phenomenal. Um, helps a ton in, in in tower right now. Certainly not meta defining, but he makes those goblins run um, with his abilities. Right, he can shock and inflict daze, which really really helps uh, slow down those demons. Uh, if you were interested in speeding them up, deals 300% magic damage to all enemies and inflicts shock on them for two turns, which is really good and of course his heal is really really interesting because it not only it actually restores shields to all the allies and all allies is really important there um then restores health to all allies equivalently to 50 percent of shields restored so that's pretty awesome uh that is pretty awesome and so I think that that's a, it really, really helps, especially when you're running tower. And I'll explain this even more when we're doing the hard tower mode. But tower is just he he makes that team do so well in that tower. And then, of course, he's emergency call. If any goblin attacks an enemy with shock, another random goblin will be called to assist. And if the attacker is Dr. Frank, two random goblins will be called to assist. And then this just powers up that, you know, that speed train, that goblin train. And so he just really activates the goblins into overdrive. And he's a, he's a pretty fantastic healer. Um, I really have enjoyed him uh, since he's come out. He's viable at five stars. So when if you've got him unlocked, he's also free to play accessible. He's on a higher. He's on the hardest node, but he is free to play accessible. And right now, of course, we have his uh, just one more day, I believe, left. If you're watching this, um, we have one more day left on his event. There's only four hours left on his event. So, you know, if you're not, if you haven't invested in him, you really should think about doing that, uh, especially with those goblins. Next, um, number seven. Uh, we're gonna also going to talk about Solius. I'm going to drop in Solius down to seven. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh my gosh, why are you dropping Solius to seven? The reason why is Solius is just losing viability at the higher ends. He's losing more and more viability. Uh, Zara just neuters him. Uh, goblins can overrun him. Uh, in truth, if you run a goblin team that I'm going to show, goblins can overrun the Solius mage in arena. Uh, they're they're a great counter to him, uh, especially if you speed them up. They might even be they might even be able to break the meta if you speed them up fast enough. It's, it's going to be a little hard to get them too fast. Uh, some of the other characters, but I haven't tested it yet. I want to. I think, but they do really really well. Um, in my hard in my hard mode in my tower hard mode, it, it I'm just facing meta team after meta team and hard team after hard team. Good ruins that sort of stuff. And the reason why I'm even get, getting through it primarily is because of my goblin team and like i said I, while i'm talking good about about that and i'm gonna get to that later uh solius is just losing viability uh he's still fast still the best healer in the game by you know by none i mean there isn't a better healer than him that's true his leadership is fantastic but humans have just fallen off um and you know they're missing some stuff and solius can't really provide that um you know he's missing the you know a d spell and a, you know the ability to take away taunts and buffs and that sort of stuff certainly if you pair him with a uh, nighty l that's true you can do that but then it's random and it's not as good so he's just losing overall viability in the in in the meta, uh, but he's still a great character. He's worth, of course, getting. You need to have him. He's fantastic, um, absolutely fantastic, and that's why he's landing in at seven. So if we go on to six, now the sixth character in this uh, is going to be Hard Work. Hard Work is just fantastic. Um, once again. Another plug and play viable character who just really doesn't need anybody else. Um, he can get in. He's a big part of the meta right now. Um, of course, with his ability to apply bleeds, his ability blocks, right? High percentage, 70% chance to get ability block on there. And, um, of course, he has cheat death. 
Uh, regeneration of allies and damage increase applies to only four allies for two turns. Now that's a kind of a hurt right now. Used that used to be okay. Now with all the minions, right, it can actually kind of screw you over a little bit if you think about it, because it's only going to apply to four allies and not all. Certainly, if they made this all allies, he would be even more phenomenal um, than he already is. But he is fantastic. This right here is the big one. Removes one debuff from four random allies at the start of turn. Once again, still the four random allies. Uh, if they were to make this all allies, it would be crazy, a little less RNG dependent, but that's why he ends up at number six or at number six instead of higher up on the list. If certainly if these were all, he would be right up there as one of the top characters in the game. Uh, but as of right now, he really is a great support character. He's probably the best support character in the game, um, gives you so much and gives you so much viability. So five, the fifth, fifth character. So we're looking at five now, right? We're starting to get into this. You see Zara, you see Mordoom, right? Uh, you see Slinger and Kara. Uh, and in this particular case, I'm going to have to go with Kara's number fifth, fifth character. What can we say about her? She's just fantastic. She's free to play. She's farmable. Uh, she's super accessible. She's one of the best characters you can get in the beginning of the game. And she stays good. Um, your ability blocks, 50% to do ability blocks for two turns is phenomenal. Days hits everyone once again a great invises people with counter a chance applied to defenders for new to pl new players to the game she's what you want to farm she's a great great character she's easy to farm right she comes out of the guild store right you can't farm her here but you just get her out of the guild store she should be one of your first characters you're working on um and then of course she gains invisibility she deals 30 percent more damage and so she doesn't really need venomate to make her better um even though she has synergy with venomate uh she's just fantastic on her own she can be sped up pretty quickly uh and she does considerable amount of damage so she is a fantastic character and that's why she comes in at number five number four and this is where things start to get a little tricky but at number four we're going to come in with shadar here as you can see on my main account shadar is pretty quick uh, but shadar is really just a fascinating character and he's a big reason why the meta works the way it does um right now with the demon meta but if you look at what he can do 260 percent magic damage inflicts armor decrease so he makes people weaker right he deals 460 magic damage and stuns the target for a turn i mean that is a huge blow of damage and he does a ton of it right and then he gains armor armor increase and debuff immunity for two turns and reforce 50 percent of turn meter to all allies all allies is very very important um and so and then we look at his increases magic damage for 10% for each living demon in the party. Yowzers. He just does so much damage. He's such a good damage dealer. And he's quick. And not only is he quick because you can make him fast at 215 or higher. I've seen that's just my guy. Um, you can make him so much faster. And of course, he gets so much more magic damage for all the living demons. And then, of course, his synergy with uh, with uh, with uh, more doom is just fantastic. And so that's why he's coming in at number four. Uh, number three, and this gets to be tough, but this is where I'm going to end up going with Zara here. Zara did not make the list last time, and you're gonna, and you're, the reason for that, and as I've explained in the video last time, you weren't able to put her to seven stars. So she wasn't raid viable, but she is, five star characters in this game are very viable. Um, and so even at five stars, she did amazing stuff, but at seven stars, she's just fantastic uh she is fast she can be super fast you can speed her up again another character you just want to speed up and add a lot of damage to she does a good amount of damage right her slicing blow of course 320 percent of physical damage to all enemies 70 percent chance to gain damage increase for two turns right her vortex of pain deals all enemies 60% chance to inflict the ability healing block for two turns. And if the target is bleeding, apply buff immunity for two turns. Really good synergy with hard work uh, there. Uh, 
attack the enemy three times. Each attack deals 230% of physical damage, and if the attack hits a shield, applies armor decrease for two turns, and then if the three attacks hit the target, applies bleed for two turns and adds ability block for one turn. So another really just amazing ability. Increases lifesteal by 25%, and if she dodges an attack, she recovers 20% of her turn meter. If Rantha is on the battlefield, she receives the same buff. So as you can see, once again, another character that doesn't really need somebody else in the game to be able to help her out but gives things to other player other characters this is a big one as we all know we had to ban her from our draft um and uh, we'll be posting video about the draft here soon i uh, didn't win my first draft so yay for that we'll post that video up here soon uh the potency and maximum health of all allied orcs is increased by 20 okay not terribly big deal really that's not what she's known for but when the battle starts all enemies receive and then once again all enemies receive tenacity decrease armor decrease damage damage decrease and buff immunity for one turn so this really negates a lot of tanks and that sort of stuff so it's really really great and that's why she comes in number three um fantastic character number two has to be slinger um slinger's leadership is the reason why the meta is the way it is all allied demons gain 20 percent of their maximum health that makes them just beefier every time an, an ally suffers a critical hit all allies recover five percent of their turn meter allied demons recover twice this amount so they get 10 percent so a go aoe crazy and just feed turn meter to them go crit crazy and go just feed turn meter to them that's really why he is the number two character in the game, but let's not forget his leadership's fantastic, but he hits like a truck, deals 250% damage, physical damage, and a 50% chance to decrease the target's turn meter by 10%, so he's got an innate uh, turn meter ability. His cool, his uh, second ability, uh, little slingshot, 370% physical damage and inflicts damage decrease for two turns. I mean, this is nice, and it controls the battlefield as well, and then his his uh his aoe is third ability here deals 250 percent of physical damage to all enemies critical hits remove one buff that's he's got a buff dispel built right on in um and so that's super nice uh that is super nice and then of course his passive ability gains damage increase crit chance increase or crit damage increase for one turn at the end of his turn which is really nice it's a little rng dependent uh but Trust me, he puts out a good bit of damage, and he leave him alone in a team, and he can wreck you. Um, he does a lot of damage. He does a lot of stuff really, really well, um, and he's he's tough to kill sometimes. And so, he, he think he, we think about his leadership, but we don't really we don't realize how good this character is on the back end just by himself. Uh, so, very very good there. Last but not least, right? obviously because he's number one and the mvp right now is more doom i think this is pretty well unifiably so uh, most people think the more doom is probably the best character in the game you look at the popularity here 78 percent um dispel on his basic removes two buffs not just one but two <laughs> that's so nice um summons his demon henchman of course we had a bug fix well it's not really a bug fix but a nerf to the demon henchman so the ai wouldn't target them that was very well needed um very very well needed but this is it rock curse right second turn he can just shut down an entire character um uh, deals 480 percent magic damage to an enemy and inflicts an armor decrease tenacity decrease slow damage decrease potency decrease and an ability block for three turns Hoo three turns this ability can just lock down a character. Now, does he get it off oftentimes on his second turn? No. Um, in fact, the AI will attack with the second turn always. It kills his AI when his AI is vulnerable. Obviously, a lot of times he'll be casting his demons first, and then he'll be dispelling with his basic and then casting this at least that's how i tend to use it uh because why wouldn't you but the ai doesn't do that so it does hurt him when you're playing defense um that's really like his only drawback um and then gains 10 percent tenacity and 10 percent potency for each leaving demon demon in the party so i think gets all these demons out and then you put him in the demon group and he's fantastic so he is the mvp right now of dragon champions and those are your top 10 now of course people are going to say why not uh thelana um or however, however you say your name thelana what about cal delman um what about kiri these types of characters well they're okay, once again cal delman's not up she was released in june technically so we'll talk about her next week yes this is my uh 
uh, Thaline or whatever you want to call her. Um, she is really, really good. I'm sure she'll make the top 10 list if she becomes part of, you know, if she starts making waves. Um, if I, my guess is that she will, when you can get her up to 256 speed, um, I'm using her currently in my, uh, main team in my demon team, that fifth slot instead of using hard orc. So, um, but she is fantastic. And, uh, so Count Delman, really, really interesting character. I think he's really, really good. Um, you know, there's some other honorable mentions like Instructor Gorum. It's really cool stuff. So if you, that's all I got time for right now. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Drop your comments down below. If you are new around here, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notifications bell so you don't miss a thing. And we will see you next time. Wing Gaming and the Law Intersect.